In Daneland, noble King Rothgar built a large mead hall called Herit so that his people will have a central gathering place. During one celebration, Grendel, a monster who dwells in the marshes nearby, hears their reveling and is seized with jealousy. As he bursts through the doors of the hall, the Danes' weapons are useless against the monster's hardened flesh, and he easily carries off a Dane to eat. For twelve long years, Grendel raids the meat hall, devouring thane after thane. None of Rothgar's men is strong enough or bold enough to deal with the monster. Oversea, in the land of the Geats, Beowulf, a Geat warrior, hears of Grendel's doings and of Rothgar's misery. He gathers 14 brave companions and sets sail for Daneland to kill the monster and relieve the aged king. When he arrives, Rothgar fondly remembers Beowulf's father and welcomes him. Beowulf confidently promises the king that he can destroy Grendel, and he will even fight him unarmed. That night, Beowulf and his men celebrate with Rothgar and the Danes inherit. But when all of the others have gone to sleep, Beowulf stays awake, waiting for the monster. He does not wait long. Soon Grendel rips open the doors of the mead hall and quickly kills one of the sleeping warriors. He then advances toward Beowulf, who leaps up and fights him in a fierce hand-to-hand struggle. With his tremendous grip, Beowulf tears Grendel's shoulder from its socket, and the bleeding monster retreats to his den in the marsh, howling with agony and rage. He will not survive the wound. At dawn, the warriors flock to the meat hall to hear the news. Everyone is overjoyed, and Rothgar, in gratitude, gives many gifts to Beowulf. However, in the marsh, Grendel's mother has watched her son die a slow, agonizing death, and filled with rage, she comes the next night to avenge Grendel. On this night, Beowulf is asleep in a separate room when the she-devil storms into the hall, seizing Rothgar's favorite advisor and devouring him before escaping back to her lair. Hearing this news, Beowulf takes his sword and goes to hunt the female monster. After traveling through the waters for many hours, he meets her near the sea bottom, and she drags him to her den. There he sees Grendel lying dead. After a desperate and almost fatal struggle with the monster, he kills her and swims upward in triumph, taking with him Grendel's head as a trophy. Joy is renewed at Herit, and Hrothgar showers Beowulf with more treasures. When Beowulf sets sail to return to his home, Hrothgar weeps and laments his departure. When Beowulf arrives in his own land, his king Hygelac welcomes him home as a great hero. Fifty years later, Beowulf has become king of his own people, the Geats. One day, a slave stumbles across a dragon guarding a hoard of treasure and secretly steals a golden cup. When the dragon discovers the thievery, he seeks revenge by attacking the Geat people. Beowulf, now around 70 years old, meets the dragon in battle. After an intense fight, Beowulf succeeds in killing the beast, but not before the dragon can sink his venomous teeth into Beowulf's neck. Fatally wounded, Beowulf briefly finds solace in winning the dragon's massive golden treasure for his people, and then he dies. The grief of the Geats is inexpressible. They determine, however, to leave nothing undone to honor the memory of their king. A great funeral pyre is built, and his body is burnt. Then a memorial barrow is made, visible from a great distance, so that even sailors far away may be constantly reminded of the greatness of the national hero of Geatland. The poem closes with a glowing tribute to Beowulf's bravery, his gentleness, his goodness of heart, and his generosity. <laughs>